Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Thank you very much for coming. Let me just, I haven't prepared the draft. I must tell you, I haven't thought about what I'm going to say. So whatever I say is Dvorim HaYitzim and Aleiv, things that really mean a lot to me. And I must tell you, my relationship with the Yitzchak is one that I cherish enormously. And let me give you a little bit of a background, how I get involved with Tyreno and what's my connection. A number of years ago, I don't remember exactly, I shudder to think how long it was, one of my sons got married in Eretz Yisrael. And I was there for a couple of weeks, for the chasna, for the duration of the Simcha, and a cousin of mine, I have about 150 first cousins, but one of my first cousins, I didn't know who there was my first cousin even, but she gave me a call, she said, I'm your first cousin, I want to come and speak to you. So I said, fine. She came to where I was staying, and she came and sat down. With a whole load of paperwork, she was starting an organization in Hanof to give chizuk for women who find it hard to, to become toy. Everybody understands if a woman goes through a, a, a cycle of shivan akim, trying to become clean, and then towards the end it fails, and then it goes through another cycle, towards the, end, towards the end it fails, and another cycle, it becomes very, very disparaging, very disturbing, and, and it really completely overtakes her whole life. And the life is just one big focus. How can I become clean? How can I become clean? To the extent that she felt it was necessary to open an organization. It was very clear that part of the reason why women find it difficult to get clean was based on contraception. Contraception is much more of an issue today than it ever was. Women are taking medication much more freely than they ever used to, uh, for good reasons. This is not a criticism at all, but for good reasons. And that, that was impacting on their lives. It was really impacting on the shot and bias. It was impacting on their ability to function to the extent that she decided she wants to open up a, a, a chizr group, a, a group in her office. And she began, she opened this chizr group and she asked me as a a role from London to look through the paperwork and being her first cousin, I suppose she felt she had a little bit of right to do that. She asked me to read through the paperwork and see if I can have any input in the organization that she was opening. It was an amazing thing. It was actually a very good organization. The organization is defunct now. I'm going to explain to you why. So it was, I think it was almost my last day there. We were there for two weeks and she must have come a numerous amount of times. Part of the reason why she came a numerous times was I was staying in her father's flat. But that's besides the point. But so she found she had the right to come and knock on my door and she came knocking on every two days and we discussed everything that we can discuss about this organization. Two days before, the day before I was going back to, to England, I'm not even sure it was the day we were flying, I don't remember anymore. She phones me up and says, you have to come to me, you have to come to me, I've just discovered an organization, it's just open, it's a new organization, you have to come and meet it. You have to come and see. So I said, look, I'm, I'm traveling tomorrow, I need to pack up, I, give me one day peace. She said, no, you've got to come. And that was the best move that she ever did for me in her life. She took me down to Hachot Swim. Is that where it is in Hachot Swim? She took me down to Hachot Swim. I don't know where this is, somewhere in Yerushalayim. We drove into some industrial estate. We went into this huge office block. We came into a suite of offices with a conference room. And there we meet Rabbi Melba. And we sat down there for an hour and a half, two hours. And I was completely fascinated by everything that he was telling us. The whole, what he told us was that your organization is not necessary. You don't need an organization for Chizuk because we can solve your problems immediately. And we sat down in the two hours that we were there and we discussed numerous different things. I can't say I absorbed it all, but we, we built that connection. And I said to Rabbi Melba, I said, Rabbi I like what you're saying so much. If you ever want to come to England, give me a call and I'll arrange for you to come to England. You can give us a conference and you can then learn a bit, little bit more. That was the best move I ever did. It was the best move I ever did. Six months later, Rabbi Melba picked up the phone and I said, oh no, not Rabbi Melba, please leave me alone. <laughs> and he said, please, I want to come to England. You promised me if I want to come to England, I'll bring you over. So I had no choice. He, he had, to, had to keep my word. So he came over to England. We, we ran a conference with, with Rabbonin. We ran a conference with doctors. We ran a conference with, with uh, color teachers, uh, mikveh ladies. We, we set up a whole organization, a whole system of, of conferences here over a period of, of number of times when Rabbi Melba came. Absolute, absolute fascinating. So I just want to move on a little bit. The, the medical side of Rabbi Melba's knowledge and all his staff is, is unbelievable. The doctors, and you can speak to Dr. Arbel, will tell you the doctors were fascinated by the amount of information that they knew. How to be able to help women in all different scenarios to become clean, just to take away that pressure, to take away that, that terrible, terrible feeling of inadequacy, that the, the enormous tension that exists in the home, in the Shonen Bais, it, it, it just completely diffuses the situation because there are answers for everything. Well, we, we thought, as Rabbanim, we were ignorant, we thought there was no answers. Suddenly, there's a whole world of answers out there for every single situation. And that really was how we got into, into Tyrena. But then, moving on from there, and this is really where my relationship with Tyrena really began to, to take root, we moved into, very slowly, I would phone up at Melba and say, I have a little bit of a problem. I've got a young man, a young couple in Edstrow who are struggling with uh, maybe PCOS or struggling with some sort of infertility. Until we got to the point where Rabbi Melba, his knowledge on, in, in, in infertility, in any aspect, aspect of infertility is unbelievable. 
we have helped over the past three to four years, and I'm not exaggerating, tens of couples in nurses' role, English-speaking couples. I personally have been involved with tens of English-speaking couples. Some of them you know and you have no idea. Some of them are, are people that you might m meet on, on a day-to-day -day basis, and you have absolutely no idea. They've been helped purely by Rabbi Melville's input into their lives. An unbelievable amount of input. When I talk about tens, I'm talking about literally tens. Now, you must remember, in today's world of modern technology, if a woman goes gets married, a girl gets married, and six months later she's not pregnant, she is stressed. She is stressed because the WhatsApps are, are going around. Mm -hmm. Everybody's living in each other's bedrooms. Everybody's living in each other's kitchens. Everybody's living in each other's back pocket. And that is a fact of life. The stress levels today don't start after two years, three years, like it used to be. They start after six months. By the time it comes to a year of marriage and they're not pregnant, they already begin to freak out. They are climbing the walls, and they are stressing. The shalom bias is at stake. There's an enormous amount of issues here. To be able to help them, I can't pick up a doctor in England and say, please, you know, what can we do? It doesn't work. They're living in Etis Roll, they're on their own, they know nothing. They know absolutely nothing. To have an organization that will pick, hold their hand and take them stage by stage through the early stages of infertility, right the way through to the high end of infertility, and I'm talking about really extremely high end, but an organization is not just a medical organization who understands the halachic implications of every aspect. And there is an halachic implications to every aspect of infertility treatment. There is no infertility treatment that's not tied into halacha. Nothing. From the earliest stages to the, to the high end of infertility, every level of infertility treatment has some halachic connotations. So to people who understand, A, the medical side, B, the halachic side, and then to be able to fuse the two together, so when you're sitting in front of a doctor, and the doctor says, I would like to do this or that or the other, the language barrier isn't there because you have somebody from the, this organization who will help you communicate with them, and then the halachic barrier is not there, because the relationship between the doctors and the organization is such that they understand that they've got to fit in with the parameters of halacha. It just completely changes the whole experience. And we have, and I stand in my shul, and I can stand in other shuls around town as well, and I look around on Simcha's Torah, this Simcha's Torah, I nearly cried, I always say. Because I looked around the shul and I saw how many children are here with Derek Ness, one after the other. Enormous amount. How many children have I brought into this world, me, through Tarenu? Tens of children, and it's, this is continuous. I'm dealing now, and you know, I say this every time. Every time that we come to Tyrena, I say the same thing, but it's different people. I'm dealing now with three infertility, high end infertility cases today. They are not the same ones that I spoke last time, they are different people. The ones before have Baruch Shem been successful. They're all having children, I've had children already. That was what, a year ago. Unbelievable, I'm, and I can't explain to you the amount of success. We're talking about high end infertility. These are people who five years ago or ten years ago would never ever be able to have a child. They are now able to have a child. And the only way they can do that is because the system's there, so they can run through the system. We need an appointment. I'll just give you one story, I think it's a story which is fair to say. There was one couple who's not a member of my shul, so most people in the shul do not know them. I didn't know this couple myself, I didn't know who they were. They knocked on my door one day, they were sent to me by a rock from out of town. They knocked on my door and they said, we have a problem. So we discussed what's the problem, they have a, 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 a difficulty and intimacy problem. And we discussed it. They've been around every single doctor in the world. They've been to the doctors in Etisrol. They've been around the doctors here in England. They've been absolutely everywhere. I said, okay, I'll see what I can do. I sat down with the doctors. We discussed it. Most doctors turned around and felt it was psychological. There's nothing we can do about it. I never take no for an answer. I remember I was in, in, in London one day, and I said, remember, you're coming to my house now. I have a couple here. I called them over, and I said, I want you to come and talk to them. We sat down in my back room on the armchair. Within 10 minutes, I remember I decided, I know exactly what your problem is, and there's one person in the world who I know who's able to treat you. One person, a doctor in Etis Roll, I didn't take it. I said, remember, I'm not happy to send anybody to Etis Roll. I want you to find me a doctor here in England. Correct? I said, please, can you find me a doctor here in England? I don't want to send a couple to Etis Roll. We found a doctor in Harley Street. Eventually, after three days of searching, and, and I can tell you, I remember searched for three days, we found a doctor in Harley Street who wasn't prepared to talk to us. Pay our money, pay the money, and then I'll talk to you. He wasn't prepared to explain to us what he does, etc. I can't send the, how can I send a young couple to something like that? In the end, I send them back to Etis Roll. I have nothing to do with this couple anymore. I don't even know where they are. I don't know if they live, I don't know if they live in England anymore. I have nothing to do with them. But they phoned me up when they came back from Etis Roll, and they thanked me that life can now return to normal. This was. A, a couple that had been around the world, honestly, around every doctor they can think of, to try and solve their problem. And the, the, the frustration, I can honestly say to you, they were at the verge of divorce. They were really on the verge of divorce. And today, Baruch Hashem, they have a family. Today, Baruch Hashem, they're living a normal life. This goes on time and time. I can tell you tens of stories that I have been involved in. And I'm only one single person, one single rob, one single person, one single killer that, that Tyrena has through Tyrena that would, would help. Enormous amount of people. I can, Rabbi, say, I want to explain to you, you don't know the pain of a young couple sitting in front of you is crying their eyes out because they, they're not pregnant. They've been married a year, two years, three years. They come in front of you and they cry. The, the pain is, 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 is almost unbearable. 
I go to bed at night after a meeting with these with a couple like that, and I can't sleep. How can I sleep? Here's a couple who got married instantly. Just imagine that within a year they'll be pregnant, two years they'll be pregnant, they'll have a family, and just the, inf the world of infertility is just such an enormous, enormous world. It really is an enormous world. It's a world that they're not, they're not capable. They don't have the, the ability, the emotional stamina, and the, the physical know-how how to navigate that world. They just don't have it. They just don't have it. With Rabbi Melba, I don't know if he does it only for me, if he does for everybody else, I'm pretty sure he does it for everybody. Tens of times we've had couples in that sort of need the treatment, high level treatment. He's taken them down to the doctor himself or sent one of his representatives. They've sat through the, 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 the meetings with them. They've explained exactly what's going on. Phoned, phoned back and said, right, this is the, what the doctor suggested. Him. This is how it fits in halakha. You are the Rav, you make the decision. He will never make a halakha decision for you. You are the Rav, you make the decision. But he, he's discussed with the doctors the options. We now know what to do. And we have saved tens of families. I'm not exaggerating, tens of families, tens of children. To stand, to stand in shul on simple story, I, 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 honestly, I, I couldn't cry, I was jumped I wanted to cry. Because I can look around and you're all dancing there, everybody's saying, I see one mess after the other. One mess after the other. Out of those, a large percentage were, were through the hands of Rabbi Melba. Yes, we have organizations here in London as well, but the, 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 the couples who are living in Israel, they're there for two years, three years, four years, they don't have the time to wait to come back to England. They need to be settled, they need to be able to feel that somebody's looking after them, they need to be able to feel that there's hope for them. And in today's world of medicine, there is hope for every single couple, there is hope, without exaggeration, there is hope for every single couple in, 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 in infertility medicine. Every single couple. It costs. That's that's the only downside, but there is hope for every single couple. There's almost no couple that will turn around and say, can't have a child today. Every single couple, Baruch Hashem, with the, with the, the unbelievable innovations, and the world is innovating all the time, and, and the ability to keep up with innovations and understand what's going on and, and be able to apply it to Alokha and apply it to Yiddishkeit is something which is unique. And that's something that Tyrena really stands for, Zarena stands for. The brain should give Rabbi Yitzhak Sadishmai. I hold myself a, a, a close friend of Rabbi Yitzhak, and I will do anything to help them because I've seen so much success, so much success. A in Shalom Bayes, in, in the Tyrena side, enabling people to, to become clean. Y y you can't imagine, I've had people knocking on my door after six months after, after birth. They still haven't been to Mikveh. You, you, you just can't understand what I mean. What do you mean? Six months, you haven't been to Mikveh. It doesn't make sense. They just can't get clean. They, they can't have another child for medical reasons or, or, or emotional reasons or whatever it may be. And, and modern contraceptions are terrible. Modern contraceptive is terrible. They have enormous side effects. There isn't a contraceptive there that doesn't have side effects. Every contraceptive has side effects. There's no such thing as a contraceptive without side effects. The 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 the, 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 the pain, the shalom bias issues, and we can fix it today with the knowledge that Rabbi Melba has imparted in us. We can fix it in five minutes, in literally five minutes. There's no reason why a person shouldn't be able to go to make for on time nowadays with all the knowledge that, 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 that that's out there. The Rebbe should give him Siyat Adishma. He should continue in, in, in his amazing work. He should continue to work hard. He should continue to help bring light in the world. With, with infertility, continue to help you with with uh, tires on Hashem. The British should give you Shabbat Shalom. That you should continue to see more success and more success and more bonus Shalom. Bonus Bonus Chaim Azani. But of course, everything comes with a price. The price is that we need an organization. The Bishop's not free. Uh, he, he does it all for me free, but he, he's, he's not free. He, he needs to survive. He needs to be able to pay his staff. And the staff is, is extremely important. I actually said to him, I remember the other, where was it, two days ago, we were sitting at the, at the Simcha together, and I said, I remember, I want to tell you something. I don't want your organization to become like the other medical organizations that this role, where you phone them up for a piece of information, they give the answer and they stand the phone down. You need to case manage. A, a couple in that this role, when they're going through infertility, need a case manager. They need somebody who can come there, who can hold their hand, who can take them to the doctors. How are they supposed to understand the medical jargon? You can't understand the Israeli doctor, even he speaks English, you can't understand him. You don't understand what he wants, you don't understand what you're supposed to do next. Impossible. You need to case manage every single case. So he said 100%, I want to have to be able to train enough staff to be able to case manage all the Couples who come in front of me. I wish that costs money. I don't know who has money, who hasn't. The British should be set this way. We should be able to help him, to help others. And help others really we're helping ourselves because no one knows when they're going to need to come onto some direct remote. But none of us know. You can have a woman who's been on contraception and she's fine. She goes through year after year and she's fine and suddenly one day it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And all the sorrows are there and the frustration is enormous. You have women going through menopause. The, the sorrows is enormous. Who knows when we're going to need somebody like that? The Rebbe should give you Satish We shouldn't need him, but he should be there and he should be able to help Kali Yisrael. And the schus of Achi Yechal Kona Shama Shiva Gov, the schus of bringing so many children to Kali Yisrael. And it's not just the children, it's bringing so much Shalom Bayes and bringing so much peace 
and, and removing so much pain. We should give him siyat shmei shlomi nas nachas from his children. We should be zeich to see the bias hagoyel, the gula, at shiachal kol neshama shabegulf. More children come to the world, the quicker Mashiach will come. We should be zeich to see the gula shlomi. There'll be no no need for other milvies. Organization organization can close down. His chizuk groups can close down. His his phone lines can close down, and the zareina can close down because we'll be zeich to the bias hagoyel. The end of all sorrows. Be kared mamish from heavy amenu. Amen. Amen. Amen.